Welcome to Triumph IAS. It's a daily mains practice question and answer series. This program is exclusively designed for UPSC CSE aspirants. In this video discussion, we will discuss UPSC CSE mains previous 25 year questions. Question number 1. Why are the tribal in India referred to as the scheduled tribes? Indicate the major provisions enshrined in the Constitution of India for their upliftment. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. The tribal in India are referred to as the scheduled tribes as they are listed in the constitution and therefore enjoy special protection. The main body of the answer should be. The scheduled tribes are various groups of historically disadvantaged people who are officially recognized by the constitution of India and various groups of tribal people are designated in one or other categories. Scheduled tribes make up around 8% of Indian population. They are identified by the specification of the community, their primitive traits, distinctive culture, geographical isolation, and level of backwardness. Gons, Santals, Bheels, Mundas, and Bagas are some of the largest tribes of India. Post independence, in its effort to improve the socio economic conditions of the scheduled tribes, the Government of India initiated a policy of affirmative action called Protective Discrimination or Compensatory Discrimination. Number 1. Article 15 declares that the state shall make special provision for the advancement of scheduled tribes. Number 2. Article 19 imposes restrictions on the rights of free movement and residence throughout the territory of India and of acquisition of property in the interest of tribal population. Number 3. Articles 330 and 331 reserved seats in the Parliament and the State Assemblies for members of scheduled tribes. Number 4. Article 335 makes provision for reservation of seats in government jobs and educational institutions for members of the scheduled tribes. The Constitution's sixth schedule provides for the administration of autonomous tribal areas in Assam. Constitution's fifth schedule provides for the administration and control of tribal areas in parts of India other than Assam. The conclusion of the answer is, from time to time government has also enacted progressive legislation and programs to bring the tribal population to the mainstream society. The Recognition of Forest Rights Act, 2006, the PESA Act, 1996, Minor Forest Produce Act, 2005 and the Tribal Subland Strategy are some of the examples. Question number 2. What can France learn from the Indian Constitution's approach to secularism? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. Secularism in India does not mean separation of religion from state. Instead, secularism in India means a state that is neutral to all religious groups. Let's start with the main body of the answer. Number 1. Religion is one of the toughest challenges facing modern secular societies in their search for identity, equality and cohesion. Number 2. For members of different communities to have a sense of equality, the state needed to create a public culture that was hospitable to religious differences, one that allowed individuals to enter and participate in public life despite their religious beliefs. Number 3. To create a comfortable and non-alienating public culture, the Indian constitution gave each individual the right to observe their religious practices and gave minorities the right to set up their own religious and educational institutions. Minority educational institutions could receive funds from the state if they so desired. Number 4. The lesson is the importance of creating a diverse public sphere that is inclusive and welcoming to all. And, most of all, one where cultural choices in dress codes, food habits and triodes of address in social interaction are not shaped entirely by the culture of the majority. Number 5. This is the opposite to what we see in modern day France, for instance. The paradigms of republicanism, as practiced in France, or multiculturalism as implemented in a number of Western democracies. This can be seen in the banning of Islamic clothing, kosher or halal meals and burkiness in France. Number 6. Current political debates in the France and other Western countries need to open up to solutions that go beyond secularism, from places like India and from elsewhere. The conclusion of the answer is, 
They need to embrace differences with policies for integrating minorities into education, the labor market and overall public life. Question number 3. Left-wing extremism is showing a downward trend but still affects many parts of the country. Briefly explain the Government of India's approach to counter the challenges posed by LWE. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. The geographical area affected by the left-wing extremism has reduced significantly in the recent few years with the number of affected districts brought down from 126 to 90 according to the recent reports. The answer should be the Government of India's approach to tackle the menace of Naxalism is a mix of policing, development, and confidence building among the people of LWE affected areas. Government's approach to counter LWE Number 1. Operation Samadhan and provision of least one UAV for each of the Central Armed Police Forces battalions deployed in the LWE affected areas. Number 2. Review of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act to ensure effective choking of fund flow to LWE groups. Number 3. An effective development agenda help in preventing locals to join Maoist organizations and rather supported CAFs to gather information about rebels' movement through local support. Number 4. Indian Army or Specialized Forces such as Greyhounds and Cobra to train forces to take on Naxals. Number 5. More proactive and aggressive approach of the forces in operations, rather than being reactive. Number 6. Unified command has been created in the states of Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Jharkhand and Odisha. Number 7. The left-wing extremism affected states have been asked to effectively implement the provisions of the Panchayats Act, 1996 on priority basis. Number 8. Construction of 400 fortified police stations in the left-wing extremism affected districts. Number 9. Security-related expenditure scheme for training and operational needs of the security forces and rehabilitation of left-wing extremist cadre who surrender. Number 10. Central scheme for assistance to civilian victims' family of victims of Naxal violence.